Here's another review video that comes from Chapter 1 in AP Calculus, and we are looking at a variety of questions still dealing with limit, the idea of continuity or discontinuities, and whether or not things are defined, continuous, or limits exist. So first question up here is a very common one. We did one just like this in class, and it's looking at a particular function. Um, it's a kind of a version of a step function where you have an absolute value of a binomial over the identical binomial. When that happens, something special happens at the number that makes the denominator 0, so in this case at 3. So what you'll notice is all of my questions are looking around the point 3. What the picture will look like, and you're welcome to graph this on your calculator, but it is nice to know, be able to draw it by hand without always having to reference it. If you go over 3, you will have two horizontal rays. One will be at 1, at a height of 1, going starting at 3 going to the right, 1 will be at a height of negative 1 starting at 3 and going to the left. Notice both holes are open. And this is true if this was x minus 6 over x minus 6 with absolute values on top, x plus 1, absolute value over x plus 1. Whatever makes that denominator 0, you have a discontinuity. It is a non-removable discontinuity because there is a gap that you cannot fix just by drawing over it. So we're looking at each side. As we look from the left, that's coming this way. It is at a height of negative 1. As we look heading towards the right, so taking our right hand and tracing along, we are going to a height of positive 1. When you get to the bottom, the limit as x approaches 3, this will never exist because you have that gap in your graph every single time. And again, kind of like a step function graph. So this will not exist. Want to make sure you're comfortable because you will see one just like that on your test. Second one is also asking a limit, and I want to talk about what you have to do versus what you don't have to do. I've seen students in the past work at this problem and immediately think, well, I need to get it in one fraction, so I'm going to get a common denominator, which you could do, but it's way more work than you need to. First thing I would try is direct substitution. I know it is a one-sided limit. I see that plus sign, but until there's a problem with just plugging 0 in, I'm not going to worry about that plus sign. When I put 0 into 2x, I get 0. When I put it into 5, 5 is a constant. The limit of 5 is 5. Then I get to this piece 3 over x. Now you have two options. You can think about what happens when you put a really, really small positive number in that's more of a numerical approach, or you could look at a graph. The graph can help you get this. If you look at a graph of this, this is a hyperbola. And what you notice about the hyperbola, it does have an asymptote at 0. That's why you can't plug it in directly. You'll never have a way to do that. You'll never have an algebra to help you. But what happens as we get closer from the right, which is what this limit's asking, it continues to go up to infinity. So that tells me that this piece is going to infinity. If you try to do it more numerically and just take 3 and divide it by 0.1 and 0.01 and just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, your number will get larger and larger and larger. So if you take 5, which is what 0 plus 5 is, and you add something that's going to become infinite, infinity always wins this battle. Therefore, it doesn't matter what other numbers were prior to it, you always end up with an infinite answer. You would have got the same thing had you just decided to create one big fraction with a common denominator, but this technique's a lot faster. The last function that's up here, the directions for this would ask you to find discontinuities and then to label them as either a removable discontinuity, those were the holes, those are the ones that are easy to fix by canceling, by algebra, and then which ones are non-removable discontinuities. These are either asymptotes or gaps. Usually with piecewise, you'll see more of the gaps, or with the absolute value that we did above, you'll see the gaps. Basic polynomial, when you have a rational function, though, that's where you'll see a lot of asymptotes. So the first thing you need to do is factor. So I'm going to factor the top by doing a takeout, taking out an x. I'm going to factor the bottom by also taking out an x. I can go even further. Both the top and bottom do factor with FOIL factor. We get x plus 3, x minus 1. The bottom will factor x plus 4, x minus 1. We have three discontinuities because there are three factors in the denominator. Your denominator is going to create your discontinuities. The ones that cancel, the x's cancel, the x minus 1's cancel, those are called removable. Think of it as as you're canceling, you're removing the problem. So we would say that x equals 0 and x equals 1 are removable discontinuities, using RD to abbreviate that. The one that will never cancel, that's where there's an asymptote there. That is called your non-removable discontinuity. 
So on the test, you should be able to find every discontinuity that's out there and always label. There, it's always one or the other. It's never going to be both. Label, identify the fact that in this case, the non-removable is also a vertical asymptote.